This week we'll explore professional keying using Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, this is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode of DSLR Video Skills. Today, we're going to be keying footage shot on a DSLR using a green screen backdrop. Now, the problem with this workflow is that the footage is heavily compressed. DSLR cameras throw away a lot of information, making it difficult to pull off a good key. But Premiere Pro and After Effects have some pretty solid tools that can help. Let's start with Premiere Pro. I've got my clip here and I've just put the video track over four stills. We've processed these stills on another episode of Adorama TV and depending when you're watching this it may or may not have come out yet but you could always keep an eye on the Adorama Learning Center where you'll see all sorts of episodes related to different topics including professional video and photography. In this case we use the camera lens blur to defocus the backdrops and make them look a little bit more recessed for purposes of keying. All right, we've got our subject here, and let's just select that track. And what I'm going to do in this case is apply a basic key. Now, I'll click on over to the effects panel. And I'm going to take an 8-point garbage mat, or we could use 16, but 8's probably enough as a starting point. And let's just drag that on. There it is. There's the effect controls and I'm going to click this little button here to get interactive controls. And what I'm doing is essentially removing the material that I don't want to have to key. So that area where we saw overshoot on the backdrop is gone. And I can just pull this in a little bit here as well. Making less work and I don't have to deal with the shadows at the edges. Now I'm going to drag through and make sure as he leans forward, that's about as close as he gets to the camera. So I could pull that in and get rid of all that stuff that I don't actually need to key. Making less work. There we go. That looks good. And let's apply the keyer. Premiere has a very solid keyer built in called Ultra. And this keyer is designed particularly for heavily compressed footage like DV or DSLR. I'll just type Ultra into the search field there. drag it over and let's just twirl this up and what we need to do is select the color we want to key. So I'll go nice and close to my subject so I get an accurate green. Now that was pretty good. If you look closely though you see it's not perfect. Notice that little shadow there and there's the edge of the garbage mat. If we turn that off and on you see it better. We have some spill that we need to pick up. So I'm going to change this to just view the alpha channel. This makes it a lot easier to see the problem areas. And what we need to do is clean up the edges so this goes to a nice clean black. If I twirl down matte generation, I could play with things like my sliders. I also have matte cleanup, which is useful. Let's go ahead here and play with the shadows a bit. I'll take that down. Pretty good. I don't want to go too far or else it's going to cut into the hair there. And I'm going to go ahead and play with the highlights. All right. And let's just deal with the pedestal to refine it. Looks pretty good. And under matte cleanup here, we're just going to play with the midpoint. We're just going to go ahead here and play with the contrast a bit and it picks up a lot of that problem. Looks good. And we'll just choke it a little and soften the edges. All right, we're just about there. A little more on shadows. That looks pretty good. Notice that those problem areas that were gray have essentially disappeared and I'm just going to soften that edge so his hair on top there still has some partial transparency. So we drag through. It's looking pretty good little bit of problematic on the top of the head where we had some spill. So I'll go ahead and twirl that down and just play with the spill suppression. And that's going to pick up some of that green. 
and I'll play with the midpoint there to refine it, and I think I got it pretty well. So at this point, I'll switch that back over and view the composite. And you see we have a pretty good key. A little bit of noise in the top, but really not that bad. And to finish this off, we'll just deal with some color correction here and adjust the saturation, the hue, so he matches the scene a bit better, and the luminance, so the lighting levels feel more consistent. Now it's a good idea to switch this preview over to full quality so you really get an idea of what's happening. And even as he's moving around, we don't really have very many problems. This is keying in the editing tool, which is a good key, but it is not a great key. This type of keying is what we call a placeholder key, and we do it during the initial edit to get approval on the story, to make sure that the right sound bites are over the right backgrounds at the right time. That's fine. When you have it where you actually want it, it's a very good idea to kick things over to After Effects. Now, you could do that very easily from Premiere Pro, thanks to Dynamic Link, with just a right click, or you could go ahead and import things into After Effects as well. Let's take a look at both workflows. If I want to go ahead and just send this whole unit over, I could just select it all, right click and choose Replace with After Effects Composition. Switch on over to After Effects, give the project a name, and you see it's added in, and there's a composition with all the pieces put in place, including the dissolves and transitions. Now because I had already imported the media and used Dynamic Link, we got two instances in here. I'm just going to choose File, Remove Unused Footage, and it will get rid of the duplicate items. And now we'll just make another comp that has that individual clip, and I'll put the backgrounds down below for now, and we'll play with those in a second. Let's go ahead here and start to key. I'm going to select my footage layer. Over in the effects panel here, type in the word key, and you'll find a nice preset called green blur. This is going to apply a slight blur to the green channel to help clean things up a bit. I'll now grab the pen tool, and I'm just going to make a loose garbage mat. Now the Roto Bezier option is nice and easy. This allows you to just sort of click and drag and it makes it very simple to create a basic garbage mat. There you go. Let's just drag through as he leans. Looks pretty good. I'll choose Effect, Keying, Key Light. Now, Key Light has an Academy Award. It's been used on tons of Hollywood films for major productions, everything from Harry Potter to Mission Impossible. This is a great plugin and it's included with After Effects. The way it works here is I just click to select the screen color, and it does a pretty nice job. Now you still see we have a little problem in there, but we're going to clean it up. I'll press M for mask, and I'll just set this to none right now. And then in the key light effect here, we're going to play with the mask. Notice I have inside and outside mask, and this allows me to define where it should be cutting things off. I'll now take a view at the screen mat, and this shows me my footage. And you notice that we have a lot of spill. The blue shirt is kind of close to the green, that the backdrop wasn't as evenly lit. We did a good job when we shot this. It was actually very well lit, very well shot. The problem was the acquisition format. DSLR footage, HDV, DV, these types of cameras are going to throw away a lot of color detail, which is very difficult to key with. So I'm going to go ahead here and process things a bit. Let's take advantage of our screen controls, and we're going to clip the black. And that fills in some of that information. Similarly, we'll clip some of the white areas of the shirt. And by just adjusting those two sliders, we did a great job of cleaning things up. I can now go ahead and despot any little noise in the black or white channel. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of softening. Looks pretty good there. Let's put a softening value of 1. And I'll flip that over to the final result. And that is a much better key. Now, notice as you're dragging, the quality will temporarily drop. 
but when you release it, it's going to update. And even as he's leaning in and out, we have really good detail there on that. I can go ahead here and if I need to, I can do some color spill removal. I can go ahead and tighten things up a bit. I'm going to shrink that by one pixel. And you see there as it ate away a little bit of the space at the ear, let's go five pixels so it's too much. And we'll zoom in here so you can see this more easily. So that's too far, but let's do negative three. There we go. And so with that, we've been able to grow or expand the edges just enough to clean up some of that fringe. So even as he turns and moves now, we have very, very clean edges. All right, that looks pretty good. And I just want to show you a couple more tricks. One of the things I like to do is take advantage of 3D lights. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a 3D object and add a light. Layer, new, light. And we'll put a spotlight in there. The cool thing here is this, this is a 3D layer. You could see this more easily if you set this to two views. So here's my footage layer, here's my light. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at custom view one, which kind of makes it like a virtual set. And you could see your footage plane there, and here's your light. So I'll grab that light, and I could pull it back. I could adjust where it's pointed. And you see it creates natural shadows and fall off. So in this case, I'm going to lift the light up a little bit and point it down at him so it recreates the light in the scene a bit better. Let's take a look at some of the other background options. And what you're seeing there is that we could tweak the light. So in this case, I could put it closer to where the sun was and then point it back over at him. And we're getting more realistic light matching the tree. Remember, the light itself has great controls. So you could adjust the intensity to overexpose if it's supposed to be really bright out, as well as the feather and the angle, and play with how dark the shadows get. It's looking pretty good. I'll diffuse that a bit. I like that. Looks pretty good. Let's try a different backdrop. I'd move it for that. And in this case, same thing. He's outdoors. It should be a little bit brighter. I could take that up. And look, without the light, with the light, I could essentially digitally relight my scene after the fact and make it match my backdrop better. So if my subject is changing, we could change the lighting levels. So in this case, he's clearly in the shadows a bit more. I'll go ahead and lower that light in the scene, point it at him. There we go. And take the intensity down. And it's better matching the scene. You could even change the color of the light if you're under different lighting conditions. In this case, I added a little bit of an orange glow to better match the scene that he was in. Without the light, with. Now, I think this functionality is super cool and I love the ability to digitally relight my scene. These lights in After Effects are very easy to use once you discover the two composition view. Simply adjust your comp views so you can see the footage and the lights and then leave the other one set to active camera and it'll look like you're looking through the lens. This is a really easy down and dirty technique and it opens up some really cool options when it comes to keying. So, King in Premiere Pro with Ultra, perfectly capable, great for those placeholder keys. When it comes time to sell the shot, take the extra time to kick it over to After Effects, use the better compositing tools, the pen tool to create a great mask, and then add those 3D lights and you could relight the subject, getting great color balance and lighting effects that match the scene you're compositing your subject into. For DSLR Video Skills, my name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to head on over to the Adorama Learning Center where there's tons of great things up there about green screen and other techniques. And if you'd like to get a list of some of the gear that I use when shooting green screen, feel free to check out some of the links below the video or that have popped up on the screen. Thanks for joining me.
Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.